What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Marco and on today's show we are going to be taking a look at one of the most fun sports games available on the market and I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. Here goes this Marco guy again saying something's fun. It's all he ever says about games is they're fun. Well yeah, that's the point of games. And this time guys, I really, really mean it. This game that we're going to talk about today is the perfect blend between a quick play. Games will get done in about 15, 20 minutes. As a matter of fact, on tonight's show, I think we're going to play three or four games, uh, depending on time. We'll see what happens. Uh, so the games will get done in 15 to 20 minutes each game. And then at the end of it, you'll look at your stat sheet and you'll say to yourself, wow, that's pretty accurate. Uh, and the game we're taking a look at today, God, this game is so good, is Stone Cold Hockey by our friends over at Stone Mountain Press. So uh, this game arrived about a week, week and a half ago, so I've had some time with this game. And without exaggeration, okay, I have played between 70 and 75 games already. I just got hooked by this game, hook, line, and sinker. I was all in from the first couple games. And here's the best part about it, guys. Not only is it quick, not only are the stats pretty detailed, but when you're playing the game and you're rolling those die, it feels like hockey. I mean, it really does feel like hockey, and you're not going to get bogged down. And again, not a shot at our friends over at APA or Strat or anything like that that really rely on a lot of details with their sports games. Uh, but you will not get bogged down with the details with this game. You could quite literally take it out of the box and go within the first 10 minutes of opening the game, and you will feel like you played a 60-minute hockey game in 20 minutes. It is absolutely fabulous, and that is just scratching the surface of what this game offers. You could create your own league. If you don't want to do that, it comes with its own created league. If you don't want to do that, there's seasons you can buy, and that's what we're going to be doing tonight. I'm going to be playing, uh, I, I'm going to pick two teams. I won't tell you who they are. I think it, I'm trying to find the best, most even matchup. But I am going to find two teams from the 93-94 NHL season. Yes, I was only about four years old during that season, but I ordered it for a very particular reason, and that is if you go to HockeyReference.com and you look at those rosters from 93-94, uh, it is a who's who of my childhood and a who's who in NHL history. We're talking Brett Hall, Wayne Gretzky, Eric Lindros, Sergei Fedorov, Chris Osgood, uh, I'm a Blackhawks fan. You got Jeremy Roenick on that team. You got Chelios on that team. Uh, the, it is a lot of fun. I've been replaying the 93-94 playoffs. There's already been some upsets. Um, so I can't wait to get into it. So without further ado, let's get down to the game room and check out Stone Cold Hockey. <laughs> All right, everybody, now that we're down in the game room, let's get after it and play some Stone Cold Hockey. So I'll turn your attention down to the table real quick, kind of give you a little lay of the land. So the game operates on three major charts, and within the three major charts, there's about five or six different ones on each table. You got another chart here. It's your fight chart, your penalty chart. And then over here, you got this cool little thing. That's your stamina chart. Now, I know none of this really makes sense to you right now, but as we get into it, Every single chart here has a very specific purpose, and the charts are so intuitive to understand the game. They're, it makes the game flow so beautifully and so quickly. Um, so I think it's best to just kind of dive right in and get a game going. So I have selected, and I'm going to rearrange my charts here. This is just how I like to play. Um, I know it's probably not the best for doing uh, reviews, but I kind of keep everything stacked. It's just, it's a little less surface area to deal with. Um, and actually, before we meet the teams, I'll explain the game comes with this. If you, of course, you buy it on Stone Mountain Press, I'll put the link down below. It comes with two D20s, two D10s, a D3, and a D6, and every single die serves a very specific purpose, which again, we'll get into as we get going. Um, you also get some score sheets, which I will put everything up I do all my scoring for this game on the iPad. It just makes, uh, A, it saves a lot of paper, and B, um, I think it's just really cool to sit with your little Apple pen or whatever and, and, and score the game out here. So I'm going to kind of superimpose the scorecard as we go along on the screen, but I'm going to be taking notes down here. And actually, let me throw that up right now. So here's a basic score sheet. As you can see, it, uh, and I'll just circle it, then erase it, but it comes down. Here's your three periods right here. 
uh, this is a special timing mechanism for uh, if you have a team that has to pull their goalie late in the game, they need a goal, so you'll use here. This is for overtime. If you're doing a 3x3 three three overtime, which is the current NHL rules, you've got your uh, scoreboard up here and some team ratings up here, which I will get to. And whoops, I opened up a prior game there, so I'll go ahead and erase some of this and we'll actually play our game here. So the two teams, that I, as I erase everything here, the two teams that I selected for tonight's game, and I think you're really going to... Uh, enjoy this. I've actually selected six teams, so we're going to do three games. Uh, hopefully, we'll get all three in because uh, there's a lot of things I want to get to tonight. Um, and again, these games only last about 15 to 20 minutes, so I think it's conceivable to get all three games in. Um, plus, I want to show you some of the fictional stuff that comes with the game, so there's a lot to get to. Uh, but first up, the game we're going to start with is from the 93-94 season. And again, I bought that season because I think it personally is one of the 10 best NHL seasons of all time, just every team was completely loaded with a Hall of Famer. And tonight, we are going to be playing our first game on tap. The team that actually won the Stanley Cup that season, the New York Rangers. Yes, this is the Mark Messier, Adam Graves, Mark uh, Mike Richter team. That New York Rangers is going to be at home taking on the Boston Bruins. Yes, the Cam Neely, Ray Bork, Adam Oates that Boston Bruins team. So I think this is going to be a hell of a match. Um, so let's actually use that as a good opportunity to show you uh, in a little bit more detail the scoring and how you set this game up. So before you begin every game, and for those of you who have played uh, Soccer Black, or excuse me, Dice United, which is another Stone Mountain Press game, it works the exact same. So every team is going to come with a control rating, home and away, an attack rating, a defense rating, an aggression rating, and their their ratings on the power play and the penalty kill. It ranges between a 1, I actually haven't seen any teams with a 1, and a 12. And there are a couple teams out there with a 12, and you might see one of those teams tonight. Um, obviously, you want to be a higher number. Uh, maybe not so much on aggression, because when you have too much aggression, uh, it tends to be a lot of puck battles, which is a lot of penalties. Again, we'll get into all that when we get there. So we'll come down to our score sheet. We'll fill out our visitor. That's going to be the Boston Bruins. And please excuse my horrendous uh, handwriting. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to roll to see who's starting in net tonight. And it kind of does matter because all three goalies on the roster are a six rating that season. John Casey, Vincent Rendo, and John Blue. We roll the 43, so John Casey is getting the start for the bees and Casey is a six and I don't know if you heard that but my dog just came screaming down here so we got a guest star on tonight's show um, and then you're gonna fill out these other ratings so Boston's on the road and on the road they're an eight so you put an eight for their control rating and my pen is not cooperating for whatever reason and oh that's horrible chicken scratch so they're an eight they're an 8 on the attack, a 9 on defense, and an 8 in aggression, and they are a 7 on the power play, and an 8 on the PK. Now we come over, we do the Rangers. So uh, my, I think there's no way that the Rangers are not going to start Mike Richter. I'm not even going to roll. If you were doing a long season replay or something like that, you would roll to see who tonight's starter was. Uh, but not tonight. It's a, This is a very important game tonight. So the home New York Rangers are going with Mike Richter between the pipes, and he is an 8 on his goalie rating, and once again, my pen is not doing the greatest. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe the battery's low. Uh, there are 9 at home, 8 on the attack, 8 on defense, 8 on aggression, 8 on power play, and wouldn't you know it, an 8 on the PK. So now we have the ratings for our teams all set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the away team rating from the home team rating, so 9 minus 8 is 1, and then we're going to consult our first chart over here, which is a control rating, and we're going to find what the control has, has gone, or our guest star here uh, is having himself a blast down here. Um, <laughs> I think he'll call him. Yeah, there he goes. He's laying down now. Anyway, so it is a 1 in favor of New York. So you come down to the control rating, 
and it you see right here a plus one to negative one so that would be a one so the visiting range is one through ten the home range is eleven through twenty again i'll explain what all of that means when we get going so uh eleven through twenty again what is happening eleven through twenty for the home team one through ten for the road team next thing you're going to do you're going to add up the aggression eight plus eight is sixteen you come down to this chart, you find 16 on the puck battle threshold. It is 12 or more, so you write that in there. And just like that, you're ready to go. No further prep needed. You don't need to set lineups. You don't need to figure out lines. You don't need to do any of that because it is all on the card. So we'll take a card here to kind of show you that really fast. So we talked about all the ratings, but here are all the players on that 93-94 Rangers team. The position they played. This, these little symbols, this little squiggly line here, that means they're an agitator. Uh, so they're not quite a goon or an enforcer, but they like to agitate. They like to talk smack and kind of give it to the other team. Or these little, uh, these little symbols, these little shields here, that means they are an enforcer. So the New York Rangers that year, it's Jeff Bukaboom was an enforcer, and so is Joe Kocher was an enforcer that season. Boston, no enforcers, no agitators. That could come into play in this game. And then over here, you see their scoring range, their assist range, their penalty range, and their fighting range. Now, all that means is, and you don't, this is the beauty of this game, you don't even have to roll to see who scored. You could just play the game out, not, not care about who scores, and, and move forward. But let's say New York got a goal. You'll roll the two 10-sided die. You read black first, so that would be a 29. So you come down to 29. Mark Messier scored. Look at that. And if it's an assist, you roll it again, 34, come down to the assist costume, column, rather. Mark Messier scored, and Alex Kovalev got the assist. You would do the same for penalties and fights. So with all that being said, let's drop the puck here between the Rangers and the Bruins. So uh, for the first couple rolls, I'm going to do this one die at a time, just to kind of explain and show you how everything works. So the first die you want to look at every single roll, and you should roll all at once, but we're just going to do one at a time for the first couple rolls uh, to kind of uh, make it easier. So the first one is this big yellow D6, and that's going to tell us how many minutes have come off the clock. So you come back over to our chart, three minutes would come off the clock. So the first action happens at the 17-minute mark. So make a little note at the 17-minute mark. Then you roll the red die again. You'll roll everything at once. We're doing one at a time. This is going to tell us who controls the action right now. Remember this little thing we put over here? 1 through 10, it's going to be the Bruins. 11 through 20 is going to be the Rangers. Well, in this case, it's a 13, so it's going to be Rangers controlling the puck. And now this is going to tell us whether or not we get an attack or a puck battle. So this threshold right here is a 12. So a, a 1 through 11 means we have an attack. That means New York will go on attack. If it's 12 and up, we have a puck battle. So it's a 6, so they are on attack. Now, I like to pick the red one back up, and I like to roll for the defense. So Boston has a chance to defend this attack now, and they will only defend it if they roll a 1 through 9. They do. They roll a six, so this will be defended. Now we roll our two, our D, uh, two D tens, a sixty. We come over to the defended chart, find sixty. Disciplined unit never allows a good chance. So the the attack kind of fizzles away. So I like to put defended, and that is one sequence of play. So let's do this again. We roll the two. So 17 minus two is 15. Now we're at the 15 minute mark. Red first. It's going to be Bruins controlling. And they rolled an 11. So the Bruins are on the attack. And now New York needs an eight or less to defend. They defend as well. And I roll the 22. Come over to our defended chart. Defender deals one hit and the shot goes wide. So. I just like to mark down shot, but now we introduce our stamina. So stamina is very important. So every time you get dealt a hit, you lose a stamina point. So the visitor loses a stamina point because they got hit by New York. Now you may be thinking, well, who cares? What does that do? Well, 
As you'll see when the game goes on, you can gain or lose stamina points based on what happens throughout the game. And sometimes, if you have a low stamina rating, what would be an attack ends up fizzling out because you don't have enough stamina. Or sometimes it works in the defense's favor, uh, so it really pays off to have good stamina. So I'm going to roll all the die at once now, and let's see what happens here. So again, you read yellow first, so 3. 15 minus 3 is 12, so we're in the 12th minute. 15, that's going to be Ranger's Puck. 7, it's going to be an attack. Now we see if Boston can defend it. They cannot. And we now read our two D10s. It's a 97. So we go to our attack chart, and it asks us a question. So the first question is, offense shells the goalie from several angles, and he's rattled. Decrease the goalie grade by one. So the Rangers pepper uh, John Casey there. So his goalie grade is going to go from a six down to a five. So I'll mark that on our score sheet. Still 0-0, zero, zero, no score yet, 12th minute of the game. Of course, hockey works backwards. All right, two more minutes comes off, so we're 10 minutes now. 12, that's the Rangers puck. Three, that's an attack. Boston needs a nine or less to defend. They don't, and we roll the 98. So back-to-back -back saves made. Goalie is in the zone, increased by one. So we'll go ahead and erase that five because John Casey – was shelled in the last time we had an attack, and now he makes a couple of big saves, and he's back on his toes. Three more minutes come off. Roll the 19. That's the Rangers puck. Roll the 12, and that is at our puck battle threshold, so we are going to have a puck battle. You come over to our puck battle chart. You find the period you're in. Here we're in the first period. Roll the 27. You find 27 aggression check so find the team that's more aggressive well boston's an eight new york's an eight that's a tie so i like to deal home team always gets the advantage that's my homebrew rule so aggression check minor penalty and an injury deal one hit so here's what happens boston dealt a huge hit to the rangers but they will get penalized for it so i'll mark down boston penalty Next, we find out the injury effect. And there's a little chart down here to find out what the injury effect is. It's a 1, so minus 1 on the control rating. So, Boston goes from an 8 to a 7 on the control rating. And I actually haven't had this happen before. So, I wonder if 9 minus 2 now, does that change anything? Yes, it does. So, we have to change the control range. So we got a whole new game here based on that injury. So now the Bruins will only control the puck if it's 1 through 9. And the Rangers control it 10 through 20. So that's a bit of an advantage for the Rangers. So let's find out who's in the sin bin for the Bruins. Roll to 70. That's going to be Paul Stanton. We'll mark down Paul Stanton down here. Stanton, two minutes. Again, apologize for my chicken scratch. Now let's find out what kind of penalty it was. Roll the 75, slashing. Two minutes for slashing. Two minutes for a slash. All right, so now the next two time slots belong to the Rangers, and I could not have written that more poorly. <laughs> belong to the Rangers. So here's what you're going to do. Now we have our first penalty of the game. So forget the timing die. You're only going to be using your D10s. And you're going to be doing it for the next two time slots. But you're going to find the penalty grade and subtract the PK grade. So in this case, New York, the Rangers are an 8. And the Bruins are an, also an 8 on the PK. So this is an even matchup. Okay, these two units are very even. So... You come down to the power play chart, and you're only looking at the even column here. So on the six minutes, you roll each time slot. So on the six minute, we roll an 88. So that says kill zone. PK unit auto kills this time slot and the next one. So very quickly here, all that means is the Rangers killed off the penalty. 
and we proceed as normal. So still zero, zero, and we roll the six. There's not six spaces left, so you know what that means? End of the first period. So after one here at Madison Square Garden, it is zero, zero. That simple, everyone. We played one period of hockey, and I get what you're saying or what you're probably thinking. Well, I don't, Marco, I don't, nothing really happened. Listen, guys, I played a game earlier this week where it was five to nothing in the first period. Okay, uh, so anything can happen. So just like that, you proceed right to period two. We roll the five, so the first action takes place at 15. Rangers are going to control the puck. They roll the 13, so we have a puck battle. And roll the 24, so come over to our second period. Look for 24. Aggressive check, minor penalty, deal one hit, another injury. So... Boston, again, remember that's my tiebreaker rule because they're even on aggression. Boston commits another penalty, and it's another injury. So let's find out what that effect is. Roll the four. So again, minus one on the control. So Boston's now a six on control. Boston's a six on control. Nine minus six is three. So that doesn't change our control ratings. It still stays where it is there. Um, all right, let's see who is going to the box here for the Boston penalty. We roll for that, an 85. That is David Shaw going to the box. It's a two-minute penalty, and what did David Shaw do? He, two minutes for hooking. So we'll write down a hook there, and exactly like we did last time. So we know these two units are even on the power play and the PK. So second power play opportunity for the Rangers. Let's see if they can put one in the net now. So first time slot, an 83. <laughs> kill zone, PK unit, auto kills this time slot and the next one. So look at that. Boston gets themselves into back-to-back -back penalties, really, and they kill them both off. So that's it for that penalty. So we roll our next one. Five more minutes come off, so 10 minutes to go already. 17, that's Rangers puck. Five, that's an attack. Can Boston stop it? They need a nine. They don't get it. 45, come down to our attack. Attack 10 and up scores. They're an eight. Attack eight or nine, it'll be a crease chance. So here's what I like to do. First, I like to find out who the shooter is. So in this case, a 52, it's going to be Alex Kovalev, and he's got a shot from the crease. Kovalev shoots a 46. If the goalie's nine or up, it's a save. He's not, so a big-time wrister and a big goal for Alex Kovalev and the Rangers are on the board first. It is Alex Kovalev with the opening goal of this game, and it comes with 10 minutes to go in the second period. We're going to find out if anybody got any assists. Uh, so five, it's only going to be one assist, and it is by Kevin Lowe. So Kevin Lowe with the assist, Kovalev with the goal, and it's one nothing Rangers here in the second period. So we roll on. Fast moving period, another six. So we're all the way down to four minutes already. And this time Boston's going to control, but it will be a puck battle. 86. 86 on the puck battle. War of Attrition, both teams deal one hit, okay? If stamina of either team is seven or less, a fight occurs. And look at that, the Rangers are at seven. So now we roll to find out who is fighting for the Rangers. 12, that's going to be Mark Messier. And for Boston, a 71 versus Cam Stewart. So now we go to our fight chart. Neither one's an enforcer, so we roll on that. It's a 56 Brief brawl, visiting player lands quick hard shot before they go down in a heap. 
The visiting team is plus one on their stamina, and they'll get a column A attack in the next minute. All right, so marked out a fight in the fourth minute, and now the Bruins get an automatic attack in the third minute. Three minutes to go, so really the 17th minute of the second period. So we just roll on the column A. Let's see if they can knock this game up. They roll a 25. If their attack is 5 and up, they score. It is. Boston puts one in the back of the net. It's a tie game. Boston scores, and we'll find out who scored on that one. And it is Adam Oates with the goal for the Bruins. Adam Oates with the goal. How many assists here? 15. That's going to be two assists. 35 is Ray Bork with an assist. And the other assist by 45, that is uh, that's Ray Bork again. So we'll roll again. 17, that is Adam Oates. He can't assist himself. 99, look at that. All the way at the bottom, Gordy Roberts got the second assist there. So... Only three ticks left here in the second period, so if this number is anything higher than a three, we go to the locker room. It's a one, so we will have another sequence with two minutes left. Rangers have the puck. It's another puck battle. 58. And a 58 says, battle back. Trailing team hustles to win possession. Roll column A. Well, it's tied, so then it says, if tied, the tire, the higher aggression team deals a hit. If aggression is equal, both teams deal a hit. Well, they're both equal, so they both deal a hit, so they both lose a stamina point, so we'll just put big hits here by both teams. All right, only two ticks left, and that's it. We roll the six, so that is the end of the second period, and it is a 1-1 hockey game. So we got a tie game heading to the third. All right, let's roll the third period here. See how fast this is going? That's what I love about this game. All right, third period of action, tie game. Roll the three, that's a 17. 12, Rangers will control. Six, that's an attack. Can Boston defend? They cannot. 58, attack 12 and up scores. They're only an eight. 10 or 11 is a crease. They're only an 8. Attack 8 or 9 is a slot chance, and New York's going to get a shot here. And the shot's going to be taken by 15. That's Adam Graves. Graves from the slot. It's a 48. If the goalie's a 7 and up, he scores. He's not. So it is a score. Sorry, if he's, it's a save if he's 7 and up. He's not. So the Rangers will open the third period with a huge goal. Scored by Adam Graves. And New York takes a 2-1 lead here in the third period at home. Let's see who got the assist there. One means unassisted. So Graves scored all by himself there. No help from his teammates. All right, one goal lead. Boston running out of time. It's a one, so it's the very next sequence. New York controls it again. Again, they're on the attack. Boston needs a big defense, and they get it. Boston will defend a 60. So that is discipline unit never allows a good chance. So good defense by Boston. Next roll. A three. That brings us to 13 minutes. It's Rangers again. Again, they're on the attack. Can Boston defend? Yes, they can again. 87, that's defending stamina, 8 and up. No shot. Well, they are an 8, so I told you stamina comes into play, so no shot. The defense does their job. They still need a goal here. Four, two, three, four, nine minutes left. That is Boston controlling the puck, but that is a puck battle. 69 in the third period says go to agitator table. So we roll 1d6. It's a 3. Home agitator. Yes, they do have one. Deal one hit for each agitator and a minor penalty called on the visitors. Whoa. 
So I guess they retaliated. So it's going to be a Boston penalty. And for all intents and purposes, this is pretty much the hockey game right here. So Boston gets whistled two minutes. And who's going to the box? 97. That's Gordy Roberts going to the box. Roberts. Two minutes. And he is going for too many men. So he'll get the He'll get the call there, but it's a too many men penalty against Boston. So the Rangers now with a chance to put this game away pretty much. They're up by one. They're eight on the power play, but Boston's an eight on the PKs. It's going to be an even matchup. So here we go. A 99. Shorthanded breakaway and a crease chance. Look at this. Boston, 74. That's Dmitry Kovartnilov. He's got a crease chance. Can he tie the game? A 53. If the goalie's an 8 and up, it's a save. And you better believe Mike Richter's a save. So uh, a shorthanded goal almost goes in the net, but Richter makes a huge save. And it's still a one-goal lead for New York. And they've got one more slot on the power play. They roll a 96. And that's it for that power play as Boston's going to kill it off. So Boston successful on all of their PKs tonight. They still trail by one with only five or six ticks left before we have to go to our modified timing, which I'll explain when we get there. Six comes off the clock. So that brings us to the last minute. Boston's got it, and it is a puck battle. It's a 14. That's a penalty on somebody. Yep. Aggression check, minor penalty, also deal a hit. So that is going to be a penalty on Boston. Oh boy, oh boy. So, and this is going to get a little tricky. I wish this was a little bit cleaner. Um, and I'll explain why in just a moment. So who was the penalty on? 33. That's Glenn Wesley. Wesley whistled for the penalty. And we'll pause for just one second. All right, so Wesley gets whistled for the penalty. He'll go to the box two minutes. And his crime is 31 hooking. Again, apologies for my horrible handwriting. So, all right, this is going to get a little tricky to explain. But when you have a team that's trailing by three or less goals... They're going to pull their goalie, and we're going to go to this little modified timing for the last two minutes of the game. Well, as you can see, New York is actually going to be on a penalty here. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to roll off this empty net chart, and you're going to make your adjustments based on how many men are out there on the ice for the team that is uh, on the penalty. Well, so Boston is a man down, but they're going to pull the goalie and be even. So I think we have to roll on the empty net even chart because 8 minus 8 is even even on the defense. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't think that's quite correct. And again, I wish we had a little bit cleaner of a final two-minute segment here. So I can demonstrate uh, what would happen. Well, anyway, they're down by one. So now we, we pull out. This is where our three-sided die, our, our D3 comes in. Because we are working off of this chart here. I'll go ahead and erase my little doodling. And we will only be using the two D10s and a D20 for timing purposes. And I'll explain what that means in just a second. So first... Let's roll it all together. So we roll a three. So just like how we do our normal timing, we're going to be minus three. So we're going to be here. Again, pen not cooperating. Uh, what is happening here? There we go. Okay. Uh, so this means you add one second to where we're at. So this sequence is happening at one minute and one second left in the game. 
and we roll the 46. So we go to our even chart, find 46. Save made, shot ricochets off the goalie. So I'll put shot save. And we roll again. There's only three left. So this is taking place here. 20 plus 17. So this is with 37 seconds left. 95 says counterattack. Oh no, the Rangers stole the puck. You roll a D6. Oh no, sorry. Counterattack scores. Never mind. They score. So the Rangers add another one, and that is undoubtedly the nail in the coffin. So the Rangers put one in 69. That's going to be Steve Larmer with the goal. And who gets credited with the assist? It's a six, so two assists. 22, that is Brian Leach. And the next assist man, 38, is Kovalev. And just for good measure, we'll roll the final, final one here. If it's anything greater than a one, the game is over. It is greater, so that's it. Game over. And how long did that take? About 20 minutes, and I was explaining everything as we went. So the Rangers put two more in in the final period, and they win it 3-1. to one. That's it. That's a whole game. That is a whole game of Stone Cold Hockey. So uh, before we start another game here, I just want to kind of show off a couple of really cool things about this game. So first and foremost, the game actually does not come with um, – the game does not come with any – season right out of the box you'll have to buy a season but what it does come with is a completely fictional eight team league and uh the creator of the game gary brown um created these eight teams and he actually provides you and i've done this and i'll show you in just a second he actually provides you with a how to make a fictional league a step-by-step -step guide on how to make your fictional team and it is very detailed but what's also very cool is he gives you and I, I left it in the box but he gives you an entire league history or well it's only the first year of the league but he gives you a team history who the owner is the coach is a little bit about the teams and the eight teams that he came up with are the Dayton Bombers the Indianapolis Lugnuts the Rockford Barnstormers the Tulsa Comets, the Regina Roughnecks, the Thunder Bay Lakeheads, the Saskatoon Stallions, and the Springfield Ozarks. Now, every team behaves a little bit differently. Like, look, the Dayton Bombers are only a four control and one on the road, where the Regina Roughnecks are 12 and a nine. They're, and they're pretty much the team to beat in the league. Um, and if, if that's not your thing, and you don't want to buy a season, which I would highly recommend you buying a season, they also, like I said, you could make your own fictional league, which I have done. So I made a 10-team fictional league. We've only played the first game or so of my franchise. And the 10 teams, again, totally made these teams up. You can make them up however you want. I know uh, people who have done like high school leagues. Um, a, a friend of mine who who is, uh, it's actually uh, Benny who started the Discord channel for uh, for Stone Cold uh, Hockey, well, Stone Mountain Press, and by proxy, Stone Cold Hockey, uh, he's done a Chicago Catholic High School League. The possibilities are endless. You can do World Cup. You can do whatever you want. Well, my league, we've got the Pittsburgh Predators, the Minnesota Wolves, the Colorado Rockies, the Philadelphia Eagles, the Toronto Thunderbirds, the Montreal Maroons, the Boston Braves, the New York Empire, my Chicago Hawks, and the Detroit Wings. Um, let me know in the comments. Do you want to see some games of this fictional thing? Now, these, these player names are totally made up, but the control ratings, attack, defense, aggression, all that has been done uh, using Gary's how-to guide. And i got to be honest with you, it only took me about two hours total to do all this. Um so a really, really cool addition. So you get the eight fictional teams in the box when you order the game. Um, and then you get all the tools you need to make your own league. Or you can buy the game with a team. So 
let's get let's get one more game in here. Maybe hope maybe we'll have time for two more, but let's do one more game since that game went pretty quickly. And the team that I selected, yes, I'm a homer. I will not apologize for it. We are going to take a look at the 93-94 Blackhawks. You got Jeremy Roenick, Chris Chelios on that team, Eddie Balfour in the net. And they're going to be taking on the Toronto Maple Leafs. This was an actual playoff series between these two games that Toronto took, I believe, in seven games back in 94. And that team had Dave Anderchuk, Wendell Clark, Doug Gilmore on it. Felix Potvin was the goaltender of that series. So I think this is going to be a really interesting game that we have here. I think the Hawks are, uh, I would say, they're comfortably the dog. Um, but you never know with this game. A couple dice rolls and the, the Hawks may win it. So let me just set up my score sheet here. So Toronto at Chicago. And let's go through the process a little more streamlined, but let's let's go through it nonetheless. So we have the visiting Maple Leafs. As I already said, Potvin is the goalie, and he is an eight. There are seven control on the road, a seven attack, a seven on defense, and a 10 aggression, and a very average six power play and seven penalty kill. And the Blackhawks, the home team, their goaltender, Eddie Belfour, is an eight. There are six at home control, five on the attack, seven on defense, ten on aggression, five on the power play, and seven on the PK. Uh, and yeah, I think this is Toronto's game to lose, just looking at those ratings. So first thing, six minus seven is a minus one. So Toronto is going to be one through ten. One through ten, and Chicago is going to be eleven through twenty. Add up the aggression rating, that's a twenty. So this is going to be a low puck battle threshold, only an 11. So we should see a lot of puck battles in this game. Maybe a couple fights too. So we're ready to go. That's all you need to do to start a game of Stone Cold Hockey. So let's drop the puck. The Toronto Maple Leafs and the Chicago Blackhawks live from Chicago Stadium. It was actually the final season at Chicago Stadium in 94. So here we go. It's a six. So right off the bat, we're in the 14th minute. Possession 16, that's the Hawks. Put a C for Chicago. That is a puck battle, 23. Aggression check, minor penalty. Well, they're even, so this is going to be a penalty on Toronto. Again, the home team gets the favor here. So right out of the gate, Toronto. And I don't know what is happening with my pen here, guys. I am sorry. It just keeps crapping out on me. Um, all right, so Toronto is going to send... 70 to the sin bin. That's Todd Gill. And Chicago has their first opportunity to get on the board. And Gill is serving two minutes due to tripping. So here we go. Huge opportunity for my Hawks in the first period at home. So there are five on the power play. Toronto's a seven on the PK. So that's two in the favor of Toronto. A 41 is attacking stamina is greater than defense. It's a crease chance. Here we go. Roll the 59. So taking the shot is Rich Sutter from the crease. A 68. If the goalie's a 6 and up, it's a save, and he is. So Potman makes the big save. Potman the save. Next sequence, a 96. Uh-oh, shorthanded counterattack. Oh, no, Toronto gets a counter. It's going to be Anderchuk from the point. Oh, it's a goal. He rolled a one. That's a Toronto goal. Oh, no, the Hawks cough one up on the penalty. Jeez, that's never good. God, this looks like crap. I'm going to keep apologizing all night long about my horrendous writing skills. Um, all right, so Toronto goal scored by Anderchuk. 
Did anyone assist on the play? Yes, two players, in fact. 19, that is Doug Gilmore. And 14, Wendell Clark. All right, one nothing Toronto in the first period. Roll the one. So next sequence is at the 11 minute mark. 17, Chicago's got it. 13, that's another puck battle. 79, make a stand. Both teams deal one hit. So Hawks down to an eight. Toronto down to a nine. If either team is seven or less, there's a fight. Nope, no fight. So we'll just mark down big hits. And we move to the next sequence here, too. Wow, a lot of, lot of sequence early here. 19, Chicago again. A's an attack. Can Toronto defend it? They can't. Oh, two, I know that's a goal. Chicago scores. And Chicago ties the game. Scored by 40. That is Dirk Graham. Dirk Graham evens things up. Do we get an assist? Yes, two of them. 75, that's Steve Smith. And 48, that is Brian Noonan. So 1-1 one, one game. A lot of action coming in clusters here. Still a little under half the period to go. And another one. Look at this. So just one minute later, it's going to be uh, Mon Montreal. Jeez. Toronto on the attack. And can Chicago defend it? They need a 7. They don't get it. 48. An 11 and up scores. No. A 9 or 10 gets a slot. No. A 7 or 8 gets a point. They'll, they'll take that. So taking the shot is Glenn Anderson from the point. Rolls a 45. If the goalie... Is six and up, it's a save, and Eddie Belfour is an eight. So that is a save. So the Hawks fend them off. Three more come off, five minutes to go. Four is Toronto controls. 14's a puck battle. 71. Go to the agitator table. Four. Home agitator. Yes, Ronick is one. Deal one hit for each agitator and a minor penalty on the visitors. So Toronto's going to the bin. So Toronto, their second penalty of the period. This one committed by Mackham, Jamie, Jamie McCoon, sorry. Jamie McCown or McCoon. And what did he do? 84. That's high sticking. I stick. So another big opportunity for the Hawks here. Put a B for the Blackhawks. And again, 5 minus 2. So it's a plus 2 advantage for the PK unit. That's Toronto. So here we go. 34. Slot chance. Taking the shot is 76. That's Brent Sutter. From the slot, 89. I know that is a save. So first... Uh, first shot, first time sequence is a huge save for Toronto. What happens in the next one? 94. That's a kill. All right, so Toronto has killed off the penalty. We go back to our normal timing. Only three ticks left in the first, and there's a four. That's it. We are deadlocked at one after the first period, and I will pause for just a second to switch up the camera. Don't go anywhere. All right, second period of action here at the old Chicago Stadium. It's a tie hockey game, and it's a six, so all the way already down to 14th minute. 11, that is Chicago's puck. 10 is an attack. Can Toronto defend it? No, they can't. 77, comeback surge. If attacking team is trailing, they scored. No, we got a tie game, so it's a slot chance here. So taking the shot is going to be Dirk Graham from the slot on 94. That is a big save made by Potvin. So Toronto survives the Chicago attack. Let's roll again. It's a one. So one minute later, Toronto controls. They're on the attack. Can Chicago defend it? No, they can't. 51. 
If they're 11 and up, they score. No. 9 or 10, no. 7 or 8, it's a point chance for Toronto. 54, that's Borchevsky. Borchevsky at 29 from the point. If it's a goal, Eddie Balfour watches that puck whiz by him. He needed to be a 9 or above. He is only an 8. It's a good number, but not enough. So, Borchevsky puts Toronto back on top here in the second period. And let's see our assists here of 15. So that's going to be two assists. It's Anderchuk with an assist. And the other one, a 67, that is Dave Ellett. All right, 2-1 to one Toronto. Second period of action. Making sure we're recording. Yes, we are. <laughs> Sorry about that. Had to check. Uh, two time ticks off. 11 minutes to go. That is Chicago's puck on the attack. Toronto will defend. It's a 20. So tough defending in tight quarter. So Toronto turns away the Chicago attack. Four more minutes come off. That puts us at uh, one, two, three, seven minutes to go. Chicago controls, but it's a puck battle. 40. Minor penalty on a visiting team. Home team takes a hit. So Chicago's going to get yet another power play as Toronto goes to the box. And it's going to be Mike Gartner going to the box. And he is going for two minutes for hooking. So Toronto cannot get out of their own way with these penalties here. So Chicago gets another power play. And it's a big one. They're down one in the second. And Toronto's a plus two advantage here. So a 12 scores! Chicago puts one in the back of the net and ties this game at one. Who scored it for the Hawks? It's Dirk Graham. How many assists on the play? Only one assist. And who else? Joe Murphy. I thought that was uh, I thought that was Ronick, but no, it's Murphy. So Chicago levels the score at two. Time running out in the second period, and I think that's it for the second period. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. No, it's the very last time slot of the second period. Controlled by Chicago. It's an attack. Can Toronto hold them off? They cannot. 61. They're not a 12, they're not a 10 or 11, and they're not an 8 or 9. So redirect did not connect, and that is how the period ends with a deflection. And again, they each get a goal in the second, and it's a 2-2 hockey game heading into the third. And let's, let's go right into the third here. Chicago and Toronto, an original six matchup and a classic one at that between the 93-94 Blackhawks and Maple Leafs. Five. So 15 minutes here, 11, that's a Chicago control. And a 6, that's an attack. Can Chicago take the lead? Toronto, do they defend? They do not. A 14, they score! Chicago with the lead. And that goal is scored by Joe Murphy. Murphy with the goal, one assist on the play, and it was Eric Weinreich. So Chicago with a with a one goal lead here, but still 15 minutes to go in the third. Only one tick comes off. It is Toronto controlled. They are on the attack. Can Chicago defend? No, they can't. 79. Pay the price. If attacking stamina is seven or more, uh, yes, it is. Take one hit. So they'll take a hit, and they get a crease chance. Can Toronto level it here? Peter Zazel taking the shot from the crease. An 80. 
It's saved. Eddie Belfour turns the shot aside. And Chicago holds the lead. Three more minutes come off. 11 to go. Toronto controls. It's another puck battle. 62 in the third period. Battle back. Trailing team hustles to win possession. And a roll on the attack. Here we go. Toronto has an attack. A 16. They score! Toronto ties the game. What a, what a hockey game. That gore, goal scored by 90. That is Mike Krzyzlinski. Oh, man. We'll just put Mike K. How about that? Mike K. With the goal. How many assists? Just one assist again. Assisted by 43. That's Borshevsky. So... One goal each in the first, one goal each in the second, one goal each in the third. It's a 3-3 game, 10 minutes to go in the third period. Roll the four, so make that six minutes to go. Toronto controls. It's a puck battle. Can we get a late penalty, perhaps? 73. Go to agitator table. Roll the five. Visiting agitator, yes. Deal one hit for each agitator. And a minor penalty called on the Hawks. Wow, that backfired. Chicago will go to the box with less than five minutes to go. So Chicago penalty. And heading to the box is going to be 21. Chris Chelios. No, my all-time favorite player. Ah, oh, Chelly. Chelios, two minutes, four, 34, roughing. That eh, sounds like Chelios. Two minutes for roughing, and Toronto has the golden opportunity here to take the lead in the winding down minutes of this hockey game. Six on the power play against the seven PK, so that's one Advantage Chicago, 22 shots in the crease. Number 80 is taking the shot. That's Dave Ellett from the crease. 58. It's a goal. No, it's not. Sorry. It was an eight or up in Balfour with a huge save. Whew. Balfour keeps the game tied. Can the Hawks kill this off? 38. Oh, wow. Minor penalty. Two-man advantage. No! The Blackhawks commit another penalty. Oh, man. So, well, that was the end of that. So, they're only going to get one more because that was the final time slot of that sequence of power play. So, going to the sin bin now is Neil Wilkinson for the Hawks. So, Toronto is going to get two more minutes of penalty time here. Holy cow. And his, uh, his penalty is 64. That is holding. So, the Hawks are really pushing it to the edge here. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. So, plus two in the advantage of the PK. 79. Kill zone. The Hawks kill off the penalty. Yes, sir. So now, because we have a tie game, we do not go to our modified timing. So if this roll is a two or less, or two or more rather, three or more, it's a one. So we're still in this period. So we'll roll all the die now. A, a nine, that's Toronto. Oh, no. An eight, that's an attack. Can the Hawks hold it off? No, a 68. A 68 says uh, a 13 score. No, 11 or 12. No, 9 or 10. No, Whew, otherwise broken stick. So that is just going to go down as a defense. And now uh, if this is anything higher than a 1, we are going to overtime. It is. <laughs> That's at the end of regulation. And we are headed to OT here at the old Chicago Stadium. So there's a few different ways you can do OT. I 
I play this normally, so golden goal, first goal wins, but we're going to use this little chart down here, this little five minute. Usually we have a resolution very quickly. Um, if you have a sheet of paper, you can do the full 20 minutes. This is designed for three on three if it's a regular season in 2023. Uh, but since we're playing in the 90s, let's just do golden goal and see who wins. But we're going to be using our D3 here. Actually, I'm not even going to do that. I'm going to... I'm. I'm going to use each time slot. All right. So we, we will, we will find a winner no matter what. So here we go. OT three, three game. It's an 11. That is Chicago. 13 is a puck battle. Yep. 13 is a puck battle. 51 hard collision home player down. Oh no. Roll injury effect for home team. Both teams take a hit. So hopefully it's nothing bad here. 17. Minus one attack and power play for the Hawks. Oh, no. So their attack and power play. So their attack goes down to a four. And their power play goes also goes down to a four. Their PK stays at a seven. So rough injury there. I wonder who got injured. That's a tough one. All right, next time slot. It is Chicago again. They're on the attack. It's a 97 offense. Shells the goalie from several angles. He's rattled. Decreased the goalie by one. So Potvin is down to a seven. Next time slot. It is Chicago again. It is an attack. Can Toronto defend it? They cannot. It's a 20 this could be the game. It is. They score. Hawks win. Hawks win. Hawks win. It is Rich Sutter with the game winner for Chicago. And the Hawks take down Toronto in overtime. Good boy. Rich Sutter, the hero tonight. And it's again just one assist, and it was assisted by 72. That is Steve Smith. And that puts a nice little bow on our evening of hockey as the, the Hawks get one, and it was the golden one in, the, in overtime. And that is a 4-3 final, and the Blackhawks win it. That All right, everybody, back here in the office studio, if you will, a little bit behind the scenes. I had some technical difficulties at the end of that game. Uh, I actually rambled on for another 5-10 minutes about all the things I loved about Stone Cold Hockey and then realized my camera died. Uh, so I'm actually shooting this about an hour or so after I had to recharge everything back up. But that, in a nutshell, is Stone Cold Hockey. And I, I'm not quite sure how long this video is. I think it's about 45, 46 minutes. And we went through two full games of Stone Cold Hockey. In that first game, I was going really, really slow. Um, I, I might play another five or six games tonight. I mean, I got the whole night ahead of me. Um, again, it's the ultimate sandbox hockey game. Create your own league. You can use the created league they give you, or you can go back and buy some old seasons. Head over to Stone Mountain Press right now to pick up your copy of that game. I love Gary Brown. Um, he's, the, he's the man in charge over there at Stone Mountain Press. The best customer service, or amongst the best customer service in the business. Um, super fun game. Hours and hours of entertainment. For me, it's 10 out of 10. 5 out of 5. Again, it's a perfect blend, as you saw down there. Perfect blend of quick action, gives you all the highlights of the games, and gives you pretty accurate stats, which I didn't actually uh, show you that part when I was down there. But, I mean, you saw a good variety of players scoring. Uh, the, the goal scorers, that, like Adam Graves, for example, who are more likely to score, are going to score. And the guys with larger ranges of assists are going to get more assists. And the guys who go to the penalty box... Very often, like Chris Chelios, are going to go to the box in Stone Cold Hockey. So, yeah, it's not going to give you your shots. It's not going to give you your save percentage and all that. But at the end of the day, I mean, unless you're a super, super sports gamer like, like I am on some days, I don't care. I, I'd rather just know that I have a couple hours and I can get, in this case, five, six, even a... a here, I played the... Uh, Sharks and Red Wings series from 93-94. I played the entire seven-game series in one sitting. 
Uh, the Wings won in five, by the way. Uh, the Canadians and Bruins from that same year. I played the entire series. Uh, I started the series at about 10 o'clock at night on Saturday, and I finished it. It wrapped up at about 11 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, and I played. It went seven games. Boston won, by the way. Uh, seven games in maybe two and a half to three hours total of gameplay. With stats and everything, you cannot beat it. Once again, Stone Cold Hockey, absolutely phenomenal game. Go get your copy. I put it all in the links below. And uh, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, let me know down in the comments. Do you want to see more of the 93-94 season? I'd be happy to. And maybe I'll maybe I'll do a whole series. If it's only if you guys are willing to sit for a two-hour video, I'll do a full seven-game series. Maybe an Eastern or Western Conference final or, or a Stanley Cup final. When we get down to it. Or do you want to see my fictional league? Or do you want to see Gary's fictional league? You let me know. Let me know what you want to see. And I'll get it done for you. That is Stone Cold Hockey. I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you next time.